Um, so yeah, I will talk today about how to issue your payment card and actually really enjoying today's uh, topics about the cards and how it started with the keynote. So um, hopefully you'll learn something new from my presentation. Uh, just a couple of words about uh, myself. Um, yeah, at Wallaster, not that much known company right now. It's a startup, it's a FinTech from Tallinn. Uh, we've been building a company for three years already. Um, and we are basically a card issuer. Uh, we are making card issuing simpler, much simpler. <laughs> this is our like, uh, competitive edge is that uh, we are focusing only on the technology to make sure that we can onboard the new clients and allow to expand the market to the rest of the financial institutions who never issued cards before because they were afraid or they were not ready to take this challenge on them, their own. Um, so yeah, just around, you know, been, been a while, uh, like 10 years in IT and in the card issuing for a couple of years as well. Don't have the global experience of, you know, expanding the programs, etc. A couple of markets for sure, but not like very global one. Um, so, and today uh, I, I kind of pointed out right away what will be in scope and what will be out of scope of this presentation. So I will not talk about the business model, like how to make money on the programs and what to do, uh, where to optimize the cost and stuff like that. Uh, definitely not acquiring and the legal framework or how legally it all can be set up, I will not cover today. But you know, feel free to just uh, ask me during the coffee and, and I'll gladly explain you all of these things as well. Um, but mostly I will talk about the solution. Um, so I try to keep it you know, more like business solution oriented uh, because I-3 already been <laughs> covered too, much, too many times. So I was more about the solution, how to make a solution. Um, so yeah, the first step uh, is a uh, pretty basic one uh, and actually very important is to just define and align yourself internally with your, within your organization what you want to achieve. Um, because that will actually dictate already uh, the rest of the technical setups. Uh, do you need to self-issue? Do you need to white label? Do you need to co-brand? Do you need to go to this scheme or another scheme? Just start with the basic things. And this is a list of pretty basic stuff. So the card type means that is it a chip and pin? Is it a virtual card? If it's a virtual card, then define what is virtual card for you because actually people have different understanding. What's virtual card? Some, some think that it's a card which is on your mobile phone. It's not, <laughs> it's not a virtual card. Um, so yeah, just start with things like which card, uh, which program. So it's a prepaid, debit, credit, and try to understand what's the difference here. Um, you know, most conf uh, the, uh, the market got confused by Revolut who did this prepaid cards and then they put uh, on top of prepaid debit and actually it works like debit. So the market got very confused about the prepaid, but most likely the prepaid market will be, you know, mostly shift to debit cards, of course. Um, so the next big uh, difference is between the consumer and the corporate cards, um, because it actually affects very much the legal setup um, and the onboarding of the customer, because the cards are not about how they function, but about the product, so how the onboarding process will work. So just think it through and define the, you know, what you want to achieve. So you, you don't need to really go into details right away. Just say it, it will be a corporate card or it will be a consumer. So it's not like you can, it cannot be both. Uh, and with the tokenization, uh, this is a new trend, right? With this Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay. And uh, not everyone understand that uh, it depends on the market. For example, take Samsung Pay, it's not really spread it out uh, in Europe that much. Um, there are here and there are some countries, but it's not available, I think in origin at all, the Samsung Pay. Uh, same with the Google Pay still, it's not, it doesn't work here or it, it works, but you cannot uh, issue your uh, card, which will work with the Google Pay. Um, so if issuing countries, Latvia, Lithuania or Estonia, it cannot have a Google Pay on it. And by car holder experience, this is actually about um, onboarding flow mostly and what kind of flows you want to cover with the card. Uh, you know, some, for some companies, it's very important to set the pin inside of the application right away and, uh, you know, remind the pin or like uh, pre-select the pin before the personalization or have some same as N26 is doing with this, uh, you need to go first transaction to the ATM and stuff like that. Um, but just think it through these basic things and I'll give examples of how to implement such project and what can be the, uh, the steps to implement such product. Um, 
And the next thing, which is not so, <laughs> uh, not, it's not the last one or, or not the least important, is the volumes. Um, because uh, some companies have very uh, huge expectations for the volumes, and that can affect, and this clearly will affect the decision to go self fishing or white label or co branded program. So you need to really spend your time to estimate what will be the volume for your cards in the next at least three years. So this is just an example of such products is that it can be a ship and pin with real-time issued virtual card, it can be a credit card, uh, onboarding in Latvia, it's a consumer card, it's Apple Pay, it's Fitbit Garmin, and it has basically some minimal functionality to just change the limits, turn off the card and all of these things, so and the volumes are pretty um, like reasonable, not, not too aggressive, but reasonable. So now how to implement this, uh, this, this kind of product, right? Uh, start googling. <laughs> the, the, the next step is really to start googling, like to understand what and who and how, uh, because I'm sure that you you heard different terms like processing, issuing, acquiring, co-branded, white label, consultants, card issuing, processing, card payments, processing. It's like lots of different terms, and if you start really googling, and if you even know the name of the company. You open their website and you're like, okay, but where is this uh, card processing? Oh no, you call it like card payments or payment processing or something else, so you can easily get confused. Um, so, the, so what to look for? Um, here, uh, you definitely need to take a look on the white label card issuing. You need to take a look on the card payment processor. And the third thing or third option is card issuing processing and I will explain uh, the difference between card payment processor and card issuing processing solution uh, on, in the next slides. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend to start with the uh, simple uh, uh, like three ways uh, like model, try to figure out which one is will be the best for you. So for that, uh, it's a recommendation to just start with the business processes and the flows. So don't think about the technical side, like all, all this ISO, etc. Think from the user experience, from the flows, what kind of flows you want to uh, achieve with your card, what kind of flows and features will be available for your card holders, and how it should look from the pricing perspective for your card holder. And that will already help you to understand which way to go. Uh, so this is the standard model, which uh, how it looks the um, self-issuing. I'm not sure if it's actually readable, hopefully it is. But uh, basically your company is in the, in the center and uh, you need to integrate with all of these uh, uh, things. So from the card scheme, obviously to decide will be a MasterCard or Visa, you need to find the processor and uh, processor usually provides the card management system as well. And here's the biggest uh, difference between card processor and card, proce card teaching processing solution is that um, the system is too tightly coupled that if you want to just take uh, some of the parts or you want to over time take the functionality to your side to, to implement it on your backend, it will not be possible. So usually that's not the case and of course the uh, mature players on the market with the card teaching processing uh, solutions at least they admit that you know if you go with us then you stay with us with all the functionality which we have and you don't start picking up over time functionality to your side. Uh, that's not the case with the processors. Processors are usually having a switch, so meaning that uh, they can send you all this ISO stuff to you, you make a decision, financial decision. It can be without PCI scope as well. Uh, some of the processors support to send the data without PCI data, meaning without the card number, so this can be advantage for you as an issuer to you don't need to be PCI DSS certified because there will be no PCI data on your side. Um, um, then definitely you need to personalization center uh, manufacturing. These two things sometimes people confuse and put together. The case is some <laughs> companies are doing manufacturing, some companies are doing personalization and of course uh, the biggest player they have both. Um, but anyway, uh, as uh, I think we actually, um, yeah, for example, yesterday the 3D secure cover uh, topic was covered pretty well. So all these components needs to be added to you as your backend because anyway, the customer belongs to you as an issuer. You will perform the onboarding, you will, uh, you will uh, do the customer life cycle. 
uh, and you will have because you know the cart itself is not a product but <laughs> product is a cart with all the on top functionalities um, so in case of um, Mm, Revolut, they added all these insurances, you know, cryptocurrencies and, uh, uh, you know, deposits and etc. So there it's uh, the card itself to issue the card. It's only the basic product. And usually you need to add all the other functionality on top of that. So and this, of course, uh, setup will take time. Um, and uh, it's very reasonable to do that if you have Mm, aggressive plans for the uh, for the uh, growing your portfolio with the cards um, uh, but this is not how I would recommend to do that for the new issuers on the market um, definitely I would suggest you to go to more like uh, white labeled solutions try it out see if, if your business idea works and only after that you can you know at any moment you can start building over time such setup on your site as well this is pretty reasonable to do that when you have a volume of 100,000 cards or something like that. Um, so finally, you can start looking for the service provider. And here I created a list of uh, kind of the most important things when we've been choosing our service providers. Um, and number one is definitely the knowledge. So you need to, um, the card issuing business is not the simplest business or it requires the very unique uh, knowledge and definitely rely on the service provider to get all of this knowledge. Uh, so try, uh, let them explain you what is settlement, what is clearing, what is issuing, what's how, how all the processes are working, and uh, especially end-to-end. -end. So, you know, put all the visa scheme there, put the personalization there, put the KYC onboarding of the card, and of course the processing, so that they, can exp they should explain you all the flows, how it works, and uh, if you still think that, uh, if you, after all of this explanation, you still think, uh, feel that you don't understand something, uh, probably that's not the right service provider for you uh, because uh, you really can make it all understandable by, uh, you know, for, by the technical people, by the people who worked in the, in the business area and the payments, and it's not something like a rocket science. Um, with the platforms, as was already mentioned today before, that uh, this card issuing is pretty old, um, uh, old technology and uh, most of the platforms are, were, were built uh, 20 years ago. It doesn't mean that they're bad or that they are like, uh, you should definitely ignore them or say that that's not, not no go, but just make sure that you, you have enough flexibility and you see that your future plans can be achieved with this platform. So this is this meaning exactly to check the API. So involve your technical people uh, early because otherwise it will be too expensive when you involve them later. So the same same uh, applies to the sandbox. It was uh, funny to hear yesterday that it's the same situation with the PSD2, that the sandboxes are, are available, but they are not working or the documentation is not there. And uh, these are the main important things for the card issuing uh, or for the card issuer that they can integrate and they can implement their ideas. So this, this is one of the criteria which uh, you need to take a look. Uh, and it, again, uh, ask your IT department or hire a consultants to try out the sandbox, try out the API, review the, the documentation. Uh, so I'm not saying that, you know, create a full blown RFP with the tenders and stuff like that, but try it out, try one API endpoint. If, if the vendor cannot provide you the sandbox, then maybe, you know, maybe it's not your vendor. So the same, same thing applies with the platform is bigger than sales. Uh, what happens in this business is that uh, you get very nice presentations, you, um, you get um, pretty good people coming to you, visiting your office, showing the platform uh, on the slide. <laughs> but uh, in reality, to deploy this platform, it will take some time for them or, it, or they need to build it or they need to certify it or they did that. But uh, with your scheme, with the scheme which you have chosen, they did that long time ago. Because in, in our region, uh, it's not a secret that the MasterCard is dominating. So if you are uh, choosing Visa, then be, be prepared that some of the providers may be outdated or they haven't certified or haven't worked with Visa for some time. Um, so yeah, make sure to review the platform and when the last time they were certified for, for a product, when last time they uh, launched the program, how much time it took. So ask all of these simple questions, but to, you know, to get more information. So don't trust only in the slides with the names, trust in the facts. Um, 
so the time to market uh, is a very um, interesting topic because uh, if you're it depends with whom you're discussing this uh, is it a card processor is it a card personalization center is it a white label provider is it a visa is it a mastercard they all will give you their own vision on time to market but we put it all into context that personalization plus processing plus visa uh, this is how it works uh, so even if the processor says that your program will be up and running in uh, you know four or five months um, confirm that with the timeline of the personalization center because that's not usually the case um, it and the manufacturer of course of the cars as well um, so the scheme membership that's a pretty simple topic um, because you just find the one which kind of works for you the best it means people it means commercial offer that's uh, because uh, overall the schemes are the same pretty much if you take Visa and MasterCard they are both doing uh, well on innovation um, and it's there is no big like difference if you go with one or another like there, it will not affect your business that much it's only about the relationship whom you trust more uh, in which market you are what's the representative of this market in the uh, in the particular scheme and uh, uh, another topic is the turnkey turn key solution so as I mentioned there is the card processors card teaching processing solutions and um, of course it will be much more comfortable to start with someone who has more features on the platform so that you need to build less things of course uh, as, a, as an IT person I like to build things but uh, it all takes time and uh, usually in, in this uh, in this business in car teaching uh, everything requires certification most of the things which you will develop with the visa with the processor or personalization center require certification certification means time so we back back to the time to market so the try to choose the provider which will definitely bring the old mandatory features for you day one uh, and uh, next thing is the team that um, the biggest not uh, this is from the experience that the team who is um, uh, delivering the project usually they are not introduced uh, till the contract is signed or they be they can be introduced just this is the person who will lead the de delivery but uh, I would re definitely recommend you to ask for the project plans for to see how it looks like do you believe these project plans and all of these things same with the if you notice some gaps in your requirements versus what they have uh, try to get to IT people try to get to the real developer basically or architect at least who will say what's the estimate for that because that's another big topic that um, to get the estimate for the feature it can take even a couple of months to just get an estimate just how much it will be month two six months like what's the high level estimate for for the feature um, so the implementation risk uh, in in the car teaching uh, if we are taking um, a more like standard solution which we discussed before about the program which is credit card latvian market etc um, you can deliver such projects really fast uh, you know it's uh, the time to market for such projects can be four to five months uh, if you are doing that with the white label solution um, it's it's a co-branded card um, and uh, the, the thing here is that uh, most important to do is the pro efficient project management what it means that lots of things can be done in parallel and the example here is the plastic which everyone are underestimating the design internally will take a month uh, then the manufacturing of the cart will take two months at least so and if you want to do some changes in the profile it will do a certification so you need to definitely start this very early uh, like immediately <laughs> um, the same thing applies with the IT and that's the question why the sandbox is very important to the get sandbox like day one to, to introduce your team and the IT people to uh, allow them to read it through to have their time to understand the API the logic and the structure of the API because you want to start this early some of the providers will uh, will do this uh, test environment or or staging environment only like in the middle of the process and then what usually happens that you are late with your timeline and uh, this is basically back to the project management and uh, and the sandbox availability and next thing is it's not just risk this is a reality um, APIs don't work um, in most of the providers you will look on the market 
they will not work as they are documented. So this is the, just the reality. This is not related to car teaching. It's related overall to the world that in APIs, most of the times they don't work as they are documented. Either the documentation is wrong or the, the API just doesn't work or you found some edge case which you, you, you were not aware. So that's why you need to involve your IT people to start trying out the thing to make a right decision with whom to go forward. Um, the next thing is was very surprising for me is even though you will have, for example, the setup where you don't have PCI data, there will be some huge requirement for the network connectivity. So if you're running your uh, software in AWS, you have this AWS VPN, it will not work. In some of the providers, it will just, the AWS VPN actually doesn't have all the required functionality to connect to some of the big uh, providers on the market. So be prepared for that, that it's not something what is like, you know, you whitelist or you have AWS VPN service and you don't want to deal with VPNs and you just want to kind of enable the tunnel and get your traffic. It's, it's usually not the case. Uh, be prepared for such things. It's definitely a risk which you need to take into account and uh, involve your infrastructure people as fast as possible to, uh, to get the requirements because it might be the case that you are not ready for such requirement for the network connectivity. And then you need to invest into infrastructure from your side. Um, and the next topic is the, um, <laughs> what was say funny yesterday as well that again this is the reality of the market right that sandbox doesn't match the production and it doesn't match from not just api perspective uh, it doesn't match from the network perspective and uh, of course you cannot reproduce all these things in the in the sandbox that's that's reasonable but uh, still uh, you, you need to find the vendor who has the closest sandbox to the production because otherwise you will test in production and this is what you shouldn't do, but this is what happens. You test things in production because they are just completely different from what it was in the sandbox, especially with the connectivity, or it can be with even some API that uh, API security that uh, in the sandbox there was no security, but in, in production there is a security which you need to implement and you can test it only in production, which is uh, of course kind of sad to have in 2020, but this is a reality as well. Uh, next, next week, I, I think I already covered partly that um, some of the providers are claiming that they're certified and that's maybe not the case. Uh, so all the certifications are available on EMVCO website. Um, check them, ask for the certification cer certificates uh, for, from, the, from the providers. Um, ask all these questions about when the last time you did that, with whom, how much it take, took time, etc. So you make sure that from the certification perspective, you are covered and there will be no surprises before the go live date. Uh, uh, and the financial supervision authorities, this is related only to the onboarding of the client mostly. How, how you do that and, uh, and make sure that FSA uh, is involved into the process. They are aware what kind of program you are going to issue in which market. So just confirm with the FSA that uh, this scheme works. Usually your provider, if you're working with a white label or co-branded, that's their responsibility to get gather all the input and, uh, and uh, align with the FSA that the program will, uh, is approved and there is no red flags which needs to, uh, needs to have uh, uh, changes or some adjustments for the, for the program. Um, so the time consumers, um, this is the three biggest um, parallel tracks which you need to take when you're uh, doing the co-branded or white label card is start so these th three things needs to be started basically day one uh, you need to start with, obviously with legal processes mean, meaning that agreement card agreement credit card agreement or the prepaid fees for the card so you need to deal with that uh, and of course fully rely here on the provider to get all the required uh, input or the templates or what needs to be filled in. Um, and another big surprise from the, uh, from the uh, what happens that some of the biggest companies or the companies which exist on the market for like 10 years, um, their trademark is not registered. And you need to register your trademark if you want to put it on your card. And then you will get a surprise when your uh, visa will not approve your design and you, they will point to trademark registration and you go to two, three uh, months of process of trademark registration because it's not the fastest one as well. So just think about such uh, uh, potential problems early and start day one to uh, uh, align with your service provider to make sure that there will be no surprises. Uh, 
chip and pin, as I mentioned before, um, if you have plastic in your program, it means manufacturing. Uh, it means that th there's a design, there's approval of the design, uh, and uh, usually the design question is um, everyone have their own opinion on the design in the company. So, and this is natural, nothing wrong with that. So spend your time internally on the design to, uh, to approve it internally, to not change it later, because that's what happens as well, that uh, kind of the order is already approved by Visa and you still want to change something in the design because the designs of the cars right now, they're pretty crazy. You can have transparent, foil, metal, like all kinds of cards right now. There's like huge echo cards. Um, so there's like, <laughs> if you really show all the possibilities to your designer, most likely he will, you know, or she will take a lot of time to figure out <laughs> which way to go. Uh, so just <laughs> take it into account, uh, involve the designers, give them the time to come up with the best design because card is something what your customer will use daily. And this is what, uh, you know, it kind of shows your brand as well. It's very important and some customers will just pick your car because of the design. And maybe it's not the best functionality, but design is the best. So just involve your designers and uh, the overall, um, uh, the manufacturing usually takes uh, around two months. Plus you add one month for the certifications, I mean, not certification, but approval from the, from the personalization, uh, sorry, from the manufacturing and approval from the, from the scheme. So overall take three months at least for the external processes and account for the internal processes of course as well. Uh, and uh, uh, the third thing is, as I mentioned before, you definitely want to start building and with your IT team, your, with your product team, uh, uh, the product they want. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will not match the time to market which you set for your business goals. So you will not match the business goals which you set for the for the uh, for the timeline. And um, here, of course, the biggest risk what what, uh, what happens is that uh, there can be uh, uh, unreasonable. Um, delays from the IT resources of your service provider. So make sure that you, uh, when you started the project, there is uh, actually the time frame which is totally dedicated for you from the IT perspective as well, because the surprises, the surprises are there with the car teaching uh, and definitely would, would like to have uh, this activity started as early as possible. So my, my suggestion here is definitely to keep it simple, stupid, the first release. Don't, don't start to build your rocket like with your you know, some, uh, some clients or some companies are thinking like, let's add loyalty, let's add uh, cashback, let's add some, I don't know, cryptocurrency connection here and there. Uh, so they are basically increasing the scope. Uh, and, but in the end, it's just a card which needs to pay. So start with just a card which can pay, launch it and add the features already on top of the card. So uh, definitely automate the like, uh, most necessary processes like onboarding because no one wants to wait for the onboarding to be completed uh, in the manual way. So it's pretty standard to be onboarded automatically. Uh, the billing part, of course, and uh, uh, make sure that uh, you are covered from the, all the uh, compliance questions from the schemes, especially as we discussed uh, yesterday, the 3D Secure is, uh, has a timeline for already two years with 2.1, 2.2 coming as well. And the schemes are introducing new type of authorizations. Uh, they have like a couple of releases per year. So uh, make sure that your service provider is certified, aware about all these timelines and have a clear, clear actions to how to deal with that. So overall for that kind of integration, it can be just some 10 endpoints to integrate. And uh, so again, sounds like not that much. And that's why uh, some of the companies are deciding to involve IT and developers later because they got assured that uh, the implementation will be pretty small. So don't worry, it's pretty small implementation. We will do that in month three, but uh, in, in reality, it, if documentation doesn't work or API doesn't work or some, some surprises here and there with API or you have internal problems with your backend. So just anyways, even if it's 10 API endpoints start at day one. So this is just one of the, uh, you know, simple um, flows. Um, uh, so if, when the customer applies for the card, uh, he goes to your company, obviously, and uh, passes the onboarding process, which is mean, meaning that KYC, AML uh, procedures, so they identify you 
uh, and your company usually is integrated through REST APIs. We discussed that onboarding is, uh, uh, should, should be uh, uh, integrated. So um, you create a person, uh, meaning that some, some service providers call it a cardholder, right? It doesn't mean or customer, so that can be the terms. Um, you create an account or balance or contract, again, different terms in the systems, but it's, a, it's kind of the same thing. So you create just some, because one, usually some, one person can have uh, multiple accounts. Uh, and for this account, uh, you, just, uh, uh, you just save these IDs, uh, person ID and account ID in your system. So you don't need to really store any other data about accounts, about the cards or about, you know, person just store the ID so that you can communicate with the external API. And when you are ready, because sometimes uh, you allow your cardholder to decide when to put an order, uh, when you are ready or your customer is ready, uh, request to create a card. So the, for the card creation, this is not some black magic or some, some huge process. Uh, usually just need to provide uh, where to ship it, what to put, on, uh, what's the name on the card will be. Uh, and if, uh, if, and of course the 3D secure settings. So it, for example, if it's uh, SMS, OTP plus static password as a two-factor authentication, then you need to provide, of course, all of this information as well uh, right away to enable the 3D secure for the card. So, and, uh, and your partner will, uh, will communicate it already to the personalization center who has your cards in stock ready to be personalized. And uh, they personalize um, every day, of course. And uh, they, usually these personalization centers are already working directly with the shipping companies. So they, they know uh, to, you know, which shipping company you, cho you have chosen or your service provider is just providing it from out of the box as a solution and you, you don't need to really worry about that. Uh, and uh, of course your, your customer will just receive the card and he will go to, to the activation process. An activation process, again, this is really depends. There's no like big requirements how to activate the card, but uh, sometimes it's just a button, sometimes enter the last four digits. It's like depends on what kind of flow you want to, uh, to implement or ask for a smart ID, like a strong customer authentication, and then you activate. And of course, right now, the best way is just to send the pin over the over SMS because it, it's actually just faster and more convenient for the, for the car holder than having two envelopes where one of them can be lost or stolen or whatever. Um, so yeah, after you finally uh, went, uh, went through all of these steps uh, and uh, you integrated, you uh, tried out the, the, the standard flow. So the product implementation, at least the minimal viable product is done. Just, just run it. Just uh, have this, maybe it's a minimal product with the card. It doesn't have all these fancy functionalities, um, but that's fine. Just start educating, start learning how to operate because operations will not, you know, kind of miraculously appear. You need to learn it uh, yeah, and your service providers need, uh, need to, of course, educate you if there will be some surprises and, and there will be surprises. For example, all these dispute flows, how the chargeback works. So you need to, uh, be aware of such processes and you need to get used to the system. So just uh, the suggestion here is to do, of course, internal pilots, um, meaning that uh, limited amount of cards with limited balances and just to make sure that uh, all the system works uh, in the way as you intended, especially uh, from, the, uh, from your side of the onboarding of the card, of course. And uh, don't integrate all the, uh, all the backend functionality or back office functionality into your back office because in the beginning that's just a waste of time and, uh, and uh, just rely here on your service provider because service provider already spent a lot of time to build it and uh, definitely uh, service providers is interested to maintain uh, the back office portals. And for you, that's just a, another point of integration, which is uh, in the beginning doesn't make sense to, to do that fully in your system. So uh, the service provider will provide you the, the tool to operate with the cards, with the balances, with the reminding pins and you know changing and seeing the transactions, authorizations, all of these things. Uh, uh, definitely in the package uh, should be the fraud monitoring and fraud prevention system, uh, which is in real time checks for the, uh, for the patterns. And of course, there should be a case management system, which if, that, uh, if some pattern was detected or some suspicious transaction was detected, uh, you have a flow how to contact the car holder and uh, understand was it him who did that, that authorization or it was someone else and you, you immediately need to block the card, of course. 
uh, and uh, uh, for the uh, for the behavior monitoring and the business intelligence tools uh, make sure to ask from your service provider if they provide any uh, reports uh, usually of course the standard reports in Excel but uh, in 2020 there are tools like QuickSight, Amazon QuickSight or some other business intelligence or maybe your service provider built it's, your, it's uh, you know himself um, but some dashboards with how which countries you, the card is being used which merchants which type of authorizations is it contactless they're using or e-commerce only they're using to understand more about the uh, behavior of your portfolio so that you can make a wise decision about what kind of functionality to add next to the card uh, and uh, yeah, the take, uh, takeaways uh, which I wanted to uh, highlight is uh, uh, this is definitely not a simple business. Uh, it requires the knowledge and uh, still I recommend to rely fully on the service provider because that's uh, usually they worked on the market for some time already and they had, uh, they launched different types of programs, they had different types of clients so they should be able to explain you all the flows so don't feel that you have uh, uh, you know you you don't feel you shouldn't feel that you are not capable to uh, to deliver such project because it's too complex and etc uh, everyone did that sometime <laughs> someday first time so you will go through, through that it's not uh, rocket science you know it's not some uh, <laughs> machine learning or whatever this is pretty straightforward integration uh, with uh, service providers and uh, usually the service providers will cover for you all the required uh, functionality as I mentioned before so you shouldn't be afraid to, to try it out try this business um, so and uh, of course uh, if you decide to integrate most of the functionality yourself be prepared for the overhead of managing uh, multiple parties multiple projects uh, this will be pretty big overhead uh, and um, that's why, of course, the recommendation here is to, for the first program, use as less providers as possible. Uh, try to get the turnkey solutions, uh, uh, at least from the technical side. Uh, and uh, this will kind of simplify your journey of the first time card issuing. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's it from my side. Thank you. You will be surprised, but we have some questions for you. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> so, and the hardest question is, what's the difference between co-brand and white label cards? There, there is no difference. Uh, <gasps> the, uh, there, there is difference, sorry. The, the co-branded uh, in, the, in the, let's take it, before the co-branded was this bank, traditional banks, they have their logo and next to their logo is your logo. But in the end, it's bank's card and bank's terms, bank's portal and it's just your logo there so you have some side deal with the bank to get some i don't know kickbacks here and there or some uh, benefits and the uh, the new white label solutions is uh, uh, basically uh, white label means that uh, it's fully your branded and it doesn't say so this is just an example of our card you know that this it's fully your design and usually on the back there's just a small like uh, word like this card is issued who is the issuer that's like small text here and there like this is issued by by this person and the new white label that's one of the biggest misunderstanding right now that uh, uh, the cobra programs were very limited with the bank as I explained before that uh, banks were kind of putting their own card to your business to your customers and that's it there's no flexibility in that in pricing into program but uh, the new white label solutions are giving you the full control on the pricing full control on the functionality it's, it's actually your card okay did everyone get to see his card number? <laughs> I think the camera uh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> talk later. Uh, I need some new we will, shoes. We will close it. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you explain to how do you explain to PCI DSS auditor the necessity to store pin or pin blocks for remind pin functionality? Boom. There's the question as well. If you, if that's yeah, yeah. helpful. So uh, the, the remind pin functionality is actually it's a business uh, need and the business need you can just uh, uh, explain to the audit uh, to the PCI DSS certifier of, of course and of, uh, and another uh, advice here is that uh, if you already have a processor in your in your scheme 
try to, and uh, try to just uh, limit your PCI DSS scope and keep it on the processor side because they of course have already such uh, not all of them but they have such functionality so again this is uh, back to the slide number two I think define the product what you want to achieve and just based on this information uh, uh, the service provider will already explain or find a way how to make it you know happen okay can I show the full pan of the card in my card app if I use cards through your service? What's the process? No, you cannot. You cannot show. No, you cannot. They are doing that. Uh, okay, they were doing that transparently before, right? Now they are masking it already with the strong customer authentication. Uh, somehow they uh, explained it to their assessor, you know, somehow. Somehow. Um, can I deliver PIN to my card holder via different digital means than SMS? Uh, uh, there are solutions on the market which allow to deliver the PIN code through um, uh, some very secure SDKs or iframes, stuff like that. Uh, I don't have experience with such things uh, because we, uh, our focus, for example, was to keep it simple in the beginning and add all of this more like SDKs and mobile apps uh, solutions uh, already later. For example, all of this, uh, if you talk with the personalization centers, uh, most of them have some kind of solution for the pin delivery over electronic way. Yes, I agree. <laughs> uh, do banks need to make PCI audits mandatory? Uh, do banks need... Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, uh, for the car teachers, of course. Okay, S uh, are there any more questions? Good, that means we can give our applause to Dimitri, yes!